Amen. Bless the Lord. I want to stand to our feet as we come to worship the Almighty King, the Lord Himself. Amen. number 1 through 4 verses 108 Psalm 108 verses 1 through 4 and it reads oh God my heart is steadfast I will sing and give praise even with my glory awake look and heart I will awaken the dawn I will praise you O Lord among the peoples I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your mercy is great above the heavens, yes. and your truth reaches to the clouds. Amen. Father God in heaven, it's in Jesus' name we come. It's in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. 
the Christ who have blessed us, who have kept us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another privilege. We thank you for another honor. We thank you, Father God, for another chance just to lift our voices unto you. God, you've been the good God. You're the one who kept us. You're the one who blessed us. You're the one who pushed us forward when we wanted to move back. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us for another chance. And Lord, you kept us in good times. You've kept us in bad times. And you've kept us this morning. And for that, Lord, we just say thank you. God, we've come to praise you. We've come to glorify you. We've come to lift you, lift you before other men. Lord, we come, Father God, to lift your name that you will receive all the glory you deserve. Lord, we know we've fallen short. Lord, we messed up. We've not been faithful. God, we have sinned. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for missing the mark. And Lord, we want to be right with you. We want to walk with you. We want to be led by you. We want you to be our leader and our guide, Father God. We come today, Father God, asking for your mercy that we don't deserve. We pray, Father God, for your grace that this should not be credited to us. But Lord, we realize that you are the merciful God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service. Bless this service, Father God, that life will be made the better for us today. Bless this service, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct us. Bless this service, Father God, that somebody will be lifted. Father God, that someone will be encouraged. That someone will get to know Jesus. In the midst of their sins, they will walk away and turn to Jesus the Christ. Bless this service, Father God, that you will be the center of attraction. Bless this service, Father God, that you will be the one that we look forward to seeing. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to rein in our thoughts, rein in our scattering minds. Bless us, Father God, that we will be here in your service and that we will see Jesus. That old habits will be rolled away. Old burdens will be thrown away. That we will be better, Father God, than we were when we showed up. Now, Lord, we ask you to clear our minds and our hearts for hope. That we will, be, we will have a reason to give you praise. Bless our youth and our young people. Bless them to see Jesus. For they live in troubling times. They live in the midst of troubling situations. Lord, we ask you to unite families. Give us hope, Father God, beyond hope. We pray, Father God, that your word go forth. That your word, Father God, will rearrange our hearts that we will be ready to give an answer to the hope that lies within us. Now, Lord, as you meet us in this room, as you manifest yourself in this room, God, we pray, Father God, that we will see you in a way like never before. Bless us that we will not take for granted this moment. Bless us, Lord, that we will be about your business. Bless us, Lord, that you, Father God, will lead us throughout this service. That we will write and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the Jesus that we serve. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. Yeah, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify you. We lift you, we blow you up before men that they will see you. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. 
allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God.
I want to see Jesus. And you can see him today. If you commit your heart and your mind unto him today, you can see him today. Amen and thank the Lord. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. Just one verse, just one verse. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. In the New Testament, if you go all the way to the back of your Bible, start turning back the other way, you'll see Revelation 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. Then you see 1st and 2nd Peter. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. In the New Testament, the book is 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. I just want to remind you, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is such an awesome God. I just want to remind you. He is the awesome God. If you would, stand for the reading of the word. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. When you found it, you will discover these words. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yes. I want to talk about a reason for the hope. A reason for the hope. On yesterday, I was paddling down through Paraland. And I looked over to my right on one of the back streets. And I saw this name of this company. It said, The Reason of Hope. So of course I had to do my research because I had already been prepared to preach this subject, A Reason for the Hope. And lo and behold, we went down a street that we usually don't go down. We had gone down it before, but we came back a different way and we went down the street. And the sign in front of the building said, the reason of hope, or the reason for hope. So doing my research, I discovered that this particular organization was developed by a young lady who dealt with at risk as well as artistic children to give them hope. Yes. It, her, her whole design is laid out behind the book that says, for I know the plans I have for your life. I know the plan that I have for your life. A, a plan to give you hope in a future. As I looked at that, I was, I was looking at the fact that when we look at the world in which we live, <laughs> we need hope. Amen. Yeah, man can live. Man can live 40, 40 days without food. Have you tried it yet? Well, Man can live 40 hours without water. Man can live seven minutes without air. Yes, sir. But man cannot live two seconds without hope. We find ourselves in the midst of despair all around us. Young people don't know which way to turn. I want to give you the reason to hope. Young people have thought that they have lost it all. They, they believe that no one understands them. But I want to give you a reason for the hope. Then you have those who really got it going on, those who really know what's going on, those who are seniors, those who are, are, are saints in the Lord, they have gotten to a point in their lives where they're about to let go of hope. I want to tell you today, don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. There's somebody today is about to give up on your marriage that you have been married for several years, but because somebody turned the toothpaste out upside down, you want to get out. Because some guy left the toilet seat up instead of putting the toilet seat down. 
Because somebody didn't pick his or her shoes up out of the floor and you stumbled and twist your ankle so you ready to get out of this deal. Well, And somebody in not maybe, maybe not in this room, but somebody has, has awakened in the morning and said that even though we're married, God just told me I married the wrong woman or the wrong man. You know, we can get real spiritual. We can, we can get we can we can get real spiritual when we get along with the Lord. Yes, sir. I told you before that the coronavirus, the devil, and the Lord are the three most lied on energies in the world. The coronavirus, God, and Satan, Lucifer himself are the three most lied on entities that exist today. You find people that say that the virus made me do it. Uh -oh. operating, operating in business. I was operating in business and, and, and a guy told me, you know, I had the virus. I said, yeah, but you don't have it now. And he said, well, I said, well, you didn't, you wasn't supposed to be there. You're supposed to make sure that other guys were there. He said, well, people don't understand about this virus. Is that I didn't even have the mind to call somebody to be there. I said, yeah, but you had the mind to try to take advantage of me. And then there are individuals who will say beyond a shadow of a doubt that the devil made me do it. But the Bible declares that men are led away, women and children are led away every day by the desires of their heart. And the devil has nothing to do with it. And then there are those who, who are super spiritual. And they, they'll let you know that, that God spoke to me and God told me this. But let me just share with you. If God's going to tell you anything, it's going to line up with the word. I heard a woman on radio speaking one day and she said, God will tell you to do something that's not in his word. I said, click, click, turn, turn, move over, give her 8,500 feet, move out of my way. I can't listen to it any longer. Because when God speaks, he speaks what he has already spoken and is in his word. And it's this kind of shenanigan that gives us a spirit of despair. It puts us in a situation of hopelessness. Young people can watch Nintendo games. They can watch, do they still do Nintendo games? Do they still do Atari? Do they still have Sega Genesis or something like that? Well, they can watch video games and get more of a perspective of how their lives ought to be lived than they can from listening to their parents. It's because we live in an era where there is very little to no hope. Don't you know that God offers hope? God, also, I just want to cloud your mind just for just a minute. Just want to crowd your, your atmosphere just for a minute to let you know that there is hope in Jesus. I'm telling you, you don't have to give up. You don't have to give out. You don't have to give in. Somebody's been bullied and somebody's thinking, I can't get around this bullying thing, so I might as well get out of here. Hold your hope. I've got reasons for you to live. That's right. Amen. Somebody has declared that I just can't live next to this neighbor. It's just too many things going on. I just can't handle it anymore, so I'm going to take matters in my own hands. Let me share with you, there's reason for you to keep living. Somebody, somebody has declared that this teacher, man, this teacher, you know, she, she's prejudiced, she's racist, she can't, she, can't, she can't get along with me and I can't get along with her. And the principal supports what he or she does every time. I'm just going to drop out and quit school. Let me tell you, hang in there because if you get your education now, you won't be have to get it later. And it's a sad day. When you skip now, when you're young, when you skip now, when you, you can think fast. And then you get to be an old man like me, an old woman like her, and come to the conclusion, I need to go back to school. Let me tell you, get it while the getting is good. And to young people who are at home, don't have a bill to pay. Young people who eat every, I mean, young folk can throw away some food. 
I'm not talking about in the trash either. They can, they can be like the trash dumpster. I mean, young people can be costly when it comes to food. Let me tell you, if somebody else is buying your clothes, if somebody else is buying your food, enjoy the ride while the riding is good because when you grow up, you're going to be expected to handle your own thing and you're going to be expected to pay your own bill. You're going to be expected to drive your own car and pay for the insurance too. Hang in there. Wait just a moment. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't quit right yet. There's, there's a period of hope right around the corner. Matter of fact, he's already here. He, he is near us. The text declares that, that we ought to have a reason for the hope that lies within us. The, the Apostle Peter talks here. And the Apostle Peter begins by talking about husbands and wives submitting themselves to one to the other. You can read that on your own time. I'm not going to dibble and dabble in that today. I'm not after that one. Then he talks about how we are being called to a blessing. Beginning in verse number eight, we've been called to a blessing. He, he says that we ought to be of one mind, having one compassion for one another. We ought to love our brothers and be tenderhearted toward them. He moves down to verse number 12. In verse number 12, he says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. You just walk in righteousness. You walk in God. And as you walk in righteousness, you walk in God, God is able to bless you. It, it, it don't, don't give in to the pure pressure. Don't give in with, to what others say. You walk upright. You walk before the Lord. And as you walk uprightly before the Lord, God has a way of blessing you in a way that you can never, ever assume. We, we find we find ourselves in the 21st century where where church going is not real prevalent anymore. And I tell you that COVID-19, <laughs> COVID-19 has given us all kinds of excuses. And people are saying, I can't go out there because I can't sit close to people. I cannot, I cannot be around people. And these things are true. And then people are cleaning their houses like never before. Thank God for some folks. It's about time you get some pine saw and, and some purex around the house. Let me tell you, people are saying that they can't make it to the building because COVID-19 is present, but they make it to the club. They make it to family reunions. And at family reunions, Brother Carter, at family reunions, folks from all over the world are back. Cousins you never seen, people you never heard of. Everybody's packed into one room. And let me tell you, we can fake it if we want to, saying, oh, we're going to keep our masks on. It's very hard to wear a mask when you're eating. You can't, you can't roll that bone for, for your rib from one side to the other as the, as the meat drops off with a mask on. You can't suck that gristle like you really notice how to suck it with a mask on. As a matter of fact, you're safer standing up passing by somebody talking than sitting next to somebody right there in their face. And then the DJ doesn't have sense enough to turn the music down, amp it down just a little bit. So you got to get right in their face and talk. Let, let's don't fool ourselves. And then you got the, the mass release talker. It's, it's a mass release talker. It is the one that, that they think that they got to pull their mask down in order to, for you to hear them. Let me just serve notice on you. Let me just advise you this morning. Every time somebody pulls their mask down, you get out of there. You run the other way. You, matter of fact, it's not that important that you hear what they have to say. If they pull their mask down so you can hear them. A lady, a lady real close to me, family member, said she was in, in Walmart. She and the other folk around her had their mask on. But there was a lady in line that did not have a mask on. She started talking crazy, telling the lady behind her, baby, I'm not contagious. I don't have any disease. You can take your mask off around me. If I had been there, my thing would have been saying, would have been that I got mine on because you don't have yours on. <laughs> we have to come to the conclusion that we've got to be realistic about life. 
And if we're going everywhere else, you better come on in this field. If we're going everywhere else, we're doing everything else, we're hanging out with everybody else, and we try to fool ourselves that we can make it with folk we have not been around. The text declares those who walk uprightly, those who are honest before the Lord, those who walk with the Lord, those who honor God, those who worship God, and, and the, the Sunday school lesson has been telling us over and over and over again, those who worship him, those who praise him, those who, who get along and worship him with all their might, God is able to bless them. Has he done anything for you here lately? Has he done anything for you to be blessed by him? And has he done anything for you to praise and honor him? Has he done anything that, that you ought to throw your hands up every now and then? You ought to raise your voices every now and then. Has he done anything for you lately? Well, let me just share with you. Eight people lost their lives. Eight people lost their lives, and they weren't trying to get in church. Men got injected with, with drugs, and, and they were just doing their job. Over 325 had to have medical treatment right here in our city, and there's an ongoing investigation today. I take my chances at the church. <laughs> I, I, I take my chances coming to the church, and, and then if, if, I, if I take my chances coming to the church, I'm going to obey the rules and the regulations of the church, for I know those in charge are looking out for me. People, individuals are are running from the vaccine. Now, now we don't even have to describe the vaccine anymore. People are running from the vaccine. And what they don't understand is, we've been having vaccines all the time. Matter of fact, children have to take their vaccine before they get enrolled in school. But now all of a sudden, when a, when a situation threatens our lives, I don't know what's in it. You don't know what's in that bill either. <laughs> You don't know what's in the lead either. You don't know what's in Bayer Aspen either. So go ahead and get it taken care of so we all can get back in church and we can all worship him freely and with liberation. Said those who walk rightly before the Lord, God hears them. And then you got the, the, the sanctimonious ones that says, I don't need the vaccine because God got me. <laughs> Those same ones that say, I don't need it because God got me, guess what? They carry guns and knives. If God got you, <laughs> if God's going to handle your business, if somebody breaks in your house, don't shoot them, don't pull a gun, don't fight them off, because God got you. Because when God got you, he got you. And you can't tell me all of the saints of God who have died from this terrible disease that God didn't get them. All right, all right. And then the problem is, even if you don't die, do you want to be laid up? Let me tell you, a mask is so much easier for you to wear than a tube about a, a half an inch to an inch down your throat and your nose. Amen. Yeah. When we walk upright. We, we trust God. He says, when we walk uprightly, when we walk righteously before the Lord, God hears our prayers. And yeah, if, if you want to pray, you might as well pray when God can hear you. And you ought to know who to aim your prayer in the direction of. When you talk about prayer, prayer is to be aimed at God because God becomes the object of your prayer. God becomes the attention by which you throw your prayer in, in the direction of. When you pray, you ought to aim your prayer at God. You ought not have a Facebook kind of prayer. When people go on Facebook, when they want to talk bad back at somebody, that whenever you do whatever you do for me, God is going to do double for you. Talk to God about it. Stop talking to the world about it. All right, all right. He says God's ears are attentive. God's ears are inclined to your prayers. So you have to walk in righteousness. Then he says, but the face of the Lord is against those who are evil. Then he begins this pericope. He talks about suffering for righteous, suffering for right and suffering for wrong. 
In other words, there will always be somebody that's going to do you wrong. Stop going to the pity party. Stop singing a pity party. Stop saying, why everybody's always picking on me? Because everybody who's walking with the Lord are being picked on. Everybody, everybody got some issues. You don't, you're not the only person going through. You're not the only person that's at the end of your rope. I've had enough conditions in the last month, I tell you, Brother Irvin, I've had enough problems in the last month to lose my everlasting mind. But guess what? God got me. I, I've had enough. I've had enough. I, 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 I've already been up to here. And then, then it, when friends start calling, it goes up. When parents and, and when, when children start calling, it goes up. And when family, I'm almost under the water right now. I'm blowing bubbles right now. I'm, I'm blowing bubbles up. I mean, I'm, I'm, water is coming out of my nose. I'm blowing, I'm blowing just to stay alive. But I don't have to tell you about it. Because God got me. I don't have to whine about it. Because God got me. When family and friends are few, just remember that God has given us a reason to keep pressing forward. So he says, he says that, that when, when you endure suffering for the sake of godliness, yeah, God got you. He says, when you suffer for the sake of righteousness, then be assured that you are still blessed. He, he says to us this morning, he, he says to us, don't even be afraid of their threatening. See, too often we're afraid of what men can do for us, against us. We're afraid of what men can do to attack us. But don't be afraid of men, they're just men. The Apostle Paul says it like this, if I die, I die in the Lord. <laughs> if you kill me, it's all right. Sister Davis may cry for a moment, then she goes and eat chicken, and guess what? She'll get over it. <laughs> I'm in the presence of the Lord. Absent from the body, it means to be in the presence of the Lord. The good thing is she will know where I am. She will know that I'm gone up yonder. She will know that I'm hanging around the four beastly creatures. She will know that I'm hanging out with the 24 elders. And she will know that I'm crying holy, holy, holy to the Lamb. Oh, yeah. That was slain from the foundation of the world. Now that does nothing for her companionship. So if she go get Joe, it's all right. I'm in the presence of the Lord. If Mark sh shows up and says, girl, you show sure are cute. It's all right. <laughs> I'm in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Matter of fact, when she gets there, I won't even be in the same type of relationship with her because the Bible teaches that in heaven, there is no more marriage up there. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. She's got to walk in righteousness. She has to walk in the suffering of Jesus Christ. And as you walk in the suffering of Jesus Christ, God is able to to bless you. Yeah. He says, don't, don't be afraid of their threatenings, nor of trouble. Then we get to verse 15. Verse 15 speaks loudly and clearly to tell us that there's still hope. When, when we get to verse 15, it, it, verse 15, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, says for you, when, when, when it says, but sanctify, it says, but you sanctify. This word sanctify means to purify yourself, to make yourself holy. It means to set yourself apart. So he says in the text, sanctify the Lord. So this word sanctify means set the Lord apart from any other thing or any other body you come in, in contact with. It, it, it doesn't, it, you cannot depend on family members and take those family members and set them on a pedestal and expect to be blessed by God. Let me show you with you. You need to sanctify the Lord God himself. Set him apart. There is no God like our God. There's no person like our God. There's no king like our God. There's no nobody of stature like our God. There's no politician like our God. The Peter says, sanctify God. Set him aside. Yes, sir. 
Consider him as consecrated. Consider him as holy. Matter of fact, this word in the Greek means to hollow it unto him. It is the same word that Jesus used that when you pray, you say hollow it to your name. In other words, when you pray, you ought to begin your prayer by saying, Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I, I lift your name. Lord, I bless you. Lord, you are magnificent. You are the great God. You are the great king. And if you begin your prayer like that, you will get caught up in your prayer and forget about your troubles. All right. All right. He says, but you. He says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. This Lord, this Lord, the supreme one in authority, this Lord, the, the master himself, this Lord, sir himself, sanctify the Lord. And then he says, God, the magistrate, God, the deity, God, the supreme divinity, sanctify him. Don't put anything or anybody along beside him nor above him because the God we serve is an awesome God. Matter of fact, he's not a awesome God. He is the awesome God. There is none like him. He says, the way you feel, this word hearts, the word hearts means your feelings. The word hearts means your thought. The word hearts mean your mind. The analogy here is a broken heart. In other words, we ought to pray, Lord, break my heart for the things that break your heart. It ought to be our prayer time. I, this, this, this analogy is, is one of a broken heart. And we ought to be praying, Lord, break my heart for the things that break your heart. See, we walking around nearly with it. We walking around like life is just a bowl of roses. We walking around like life is just passing us on. We don't care what, what happens in the Congress. We don't care what happens in the state. We don't care what happens in the nation. But the fact of the matter is we got to sanctify the Lord in our hearts. We got to make sure that our feelings, our emotions, our minds are in control. So much so that whatever they do in the capital, if it breaks God's heart, it ought to break our heart. It ought to break our heart. We, we ought not be able to hear news every day without heartbroken. I mean, every, every single day, every single day is one thing after the other. It's one thing after the other. I mean, they spend 29.5 minutes telling you about bad news, and then finally the news reporter said, be kind to one another. He, he has bombarded you. She has bombarded you with bad news. A, a, a lady kills her own child behind a man. Let me tell you, women, no man are more, is more valuable than the one that you gave birth to. Especially if he's a rascal. I mean, women are leaving their children with guys that have already misused the children before. Women are allowing men to beat up and even kill their children while they go move out in another house with them. Yeah. Where children have to live in a house for a year with a dead corpse. What have we come to? Somebody asked the preacher the other day, man, what is this world coming to? He said, the end. It's coming to an end. It's, it's rapidly coming to an end because the Bible is rapidly fulfilling itself. And the Bible says that men will, will love themselves more than they love God. And then if they don't love themselves more than they love God, they will love the cre creation more than they love the creator. And so they, they're getting caught up on stuff. He says, sanctify, set us apart the Lord God in your heart. Look at him differently. Regardless of how spiritually and motivated you are, regardless of how spiritual you have already been, regardless of how long you've been walking with the Lord, there's another level the Lord can take you. And God wants you to take you to a new level, but you're busy gossiping, and he can't get you there. You, you're busy lying, and he can't get you there. You busy cussing and he can't get you there. You busy stealing. Let me just share with you. If you stop stealing, God can supply all your needs. Okay. Okay. One, of, one of the worst things that, that I can really see when the fair comes to town and they have uh, certain heights and certain ages and then you get to a certain age. Let's say you get to 12, then, then you have to pay a dollar more. And grandmamas and mamas Daddies and granddaddies, because the boy is so short, <laughs> they tell him, oh, he's 10, and the boy ain't got sense enough to do anything but tell the truth. He said, no, I ain't 10, I'm 12. 
Because during that time, they're proud to be 12. Well, the man knows that the mama, the grandmama, the granddaddy just lied. But you will risk the blessings of God to save a dollar at the fair when the God that we serve can feed even the hungry man. You will risk a dollar. You will miss God for just a dollar. You miss him for a dollar, for a dollar. You can pick a dollar up on the street. I mean, all you got to do is look down. Brother Joseph, you can pick up a dollar anywhere. You can, you can find a dollar anywhere. You don't have to lie and cut your blessings short. For, the, for it says that the eyes of the Lord are turned toward those who are holy. And his ears are inclined. His ears are turned in the direction. He hears your cry. Woman led, woman does does what she does every day. Every day she gets in her, her window and she pray, Lord, I need you to make ends meet. She's a retired woman. The Lord has, has fixed her salary. How many, <laughs> how many of you know that if, if you on a fixed income, God fixed it? And if God has fixed it, you better give your tithes and offering because if you were making something then and you can't make it now, you certainly depend on the Lord. So don't steal from the Lord. Give unto the Lord so the Lord can give you good measures, shaken down, pressed together, and running over. So this woman would get in her window every day and say, Lord, I need you to meet my needs. And Lord, this is what I want to eat today. And she would pray. She said, Lord, I want some cornbread, but I don't have cornbread mixed. Lord, 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 I want some, I want some chicken. Lord, I want some ribs. Lord, I want some food. I want some vegetables, Lord. Matter of fact, I don't just want greens. I want mustard greens. Some terrible boys heard this woman prayer as she was praying every day. And they said, we're going to fix this old lady today. Those boys went to the store. You see, the devil will lose his, will, will, will use his last dime to make God look bad. Those boys went to the store and used their last dime and bought that woman some mustard greens. <laughs> bought that woman some, some, some cornbread mix. Bought that woman some, some meat and just the meat that she called out. And then they took the, the bag and set it at her front door, knocked on the door and ran away. The woman went out and got the groceries off the front door. Took it to the kitchen before she even opened the bag. She knew that God had blessed her with what she asked for. She didn't even stay in the kitchen. She ran back to that same window where she was praying. And she said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you delivered for me. I, I thank you, Lord, that I can eat whatever I want to eat. And Lord, I thank you for getting the devil to deliver it to my front door. When you walk uprightly before the Lord, the Lord can keep you. The Lord can bless you when you set aside the Lord in your heart. And then he says, always be ready to give a defense of, to everyone who asks you of a reason of your hope. The hope that is in you. Do it with meekness and with fear. He says, always be ready. This, this word ready is a fitness word. This word ready means you got to exercise to get there. This word ready means that you got to pump up yourself to get there. This word ready means that you have to study the word of God in order to be ready, in order to do to deliver what God would have you to deliver. This word ready means that you got to exercise your mind, your heart. You got to exercise your body in the word of the Lord in order to be ready. So he says be ready. This word ready means to be adjusted. The word ready means to be prepared. The word ready means to be obligated, to obligate yourself. So the word ready says, it says that I'm going to adjust whatever I think I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm going to make an adjustment for God's sake. Too many people not making adjustments. Too many people got to want to tell you I am who I am and you got to accept me how I am. Let me tell you, the Bible says always be ready. Already make adjustments. Always be ready to make adjustments. Always be prepared to make adjustments. Yeah, yeah. Some people can't make adjustments. Uh -oh. I'm sweating right now like a like a sinner in church. <laughs> but there's somebody out there saying it's too hot or too cold. But the fact of the matter is, you just got to adjust. <laughs> 
you, you gotta adjust. See, see, I grew up in the backwoods of Mississippi. We didn't have any air conditioning. Our children are so far, they got everything they need and they complain when it doesn't work right. <laughs> and we have to run out and spend a whole lot of money when it doesn't work right. So they can just survive and live. But we ought to be ready to make adjustments. The word defense, it says be ready always to give a defense. This word defense means to give an answer. It is synonymous to the courtroom term that means to plead your case. You ought to be ready to give an answer. Well, Brother Whitlock pushed it this morning. I mean, he pushed it this morning. I said, look at him, look at him. He can't come on around the corner with it this morning. He pushed it this morning. He was saying, as I say to you today, you ought to always be ready to give a defense, to give an answer, to plead your case, to clear your name. In other words, folks are looking forward to you clearing your name. And let me tell you, I've had a bad night. But I'm always ready to state my case. I'm always ready to do what the old folk back home would say. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. <laughs> the people I used to hang out with, I don't hang out with them anymore. Why, preacher? Simply because I have a defense now. I have an answer now. And my answer is that I have cleared my name. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Rose had a way of calling me Alexander. And I had to remind him, I said, Pastor, you know, my name is Matthew Davis. My middle name is Alexander. And I usually use Matthew Davis instead of Alexander because when you look in the Bible, Alexander has a bad name. <laughs> See, if you read your Bible, you know that. If you read your Bible, I, I, I set him down. I, I was getting ready to really coach him before he really slapped me back, back around. I, I, I said, I was getting ready to let him know and let him have it. I said, now look, you calling me Alexander every chance you get. But, but when you look in the Bible, Alexander the carpet smith has a bad name. I said, Paul says to mark that man, to identify Alexander the carpet smith, for he did me great harm in ministry. And let me tell you, some of the preachers that have been here and have left here, I call them to their faces, Alexander the carpet smith, because they did me great danger and great harm in ministry. So after I got through with my little sanctimonious presentation to him, he said, yeah, but the name that was once a bad name has been cleared. <laughs> the name that was the, the name that, that once did bad things, it, it has been cleared. It has been left off the hook. It, it has been set free. It has it has a cost and account that has been zeroed out by the name of Jesus. I said, I'm so glad he gave me that excuse. <laughs> So he can call me Alexander anytime. Now, simply because we need to understand if you are a Christian, your name has been cleared. If you're a Christian, they can't talk about what you used to do. They, and whenever they remind you of how you used to be, you remind them of where you headed. Every time they remind you of who you used to be, you remind them of who they still are. Every time they remind you of the places you used to go, you remind them, I'm going up yonder and I'm going to see the king. You got to be ready to give an answer. You got to have a ready defense. You got to be ready to have a defense of, of what hope you have in you. You ought to have hope. Anybody in the room got hope? Anybody? Do you just have hope? I, and after, after today, I want you to have hope. I want you to have some hope. He says, be ready, have a ready defense for everyone who asks. You know, people really ask, you know. They, they want to know why you think the way you think. Why you do what you do. Why you act what you do. Somebody this morning, when you drove out of the driveway, when you bagged out of the driveway, when you left your apartment, when you left your house, they were wondering, why they keep going down under that church? You ought to be ready <laughs> to give a defense of the hope that lies within you. You ought to be ready to give a defense of the reason why you have hope. Because people have the audacity to gall to ask you, trying to shut you down. But you need to call them and call their attention to the righteous one. 
you ought to have a reason. You, have a, you ought to have a hope, this word hope, and I'll come back and deal with the reason toward the end here. You ought to have hope. Hope is anticipation. Hope is faith. Hope is confidence. And the way I've said it before, because I heard Pastor Manson Johnson say, hope is faith standing over on his tiptoes, looking over the horizon to see what God is, is going to bless you with next. You ought to have hope. It doesn't matter the circumstances we're in today. We ought to have hope because hope is faith standing on his tiptoes, looking over the horizon, looking for the blessing that God is about to bring to you. When you don't have hope, anything can happen. You can act any way. But he says to have hope. And then he says to give everybody this hope. And you need to do it with meekness and with fear. You need to be humble about it need to be mild about it. And when it talks about fear, you ought to be alarmed. You ought to have fear in no man but God. I don't fear any man. You can't fear any man other than God. Things will happen. People will do what they do, but they cannot destroy your soul. He says, have a reason. Now, let me just tell you, this word reason is logos. In the Greek, this word reason is logos in the Greek. It word, this word means a divine expression. This word means speech. This word means cause. This word means communication. The most important word in the text in this particular verse is reason. It is logos. It is the divine expression. It is the cause. It, it is speech. It is communication. You see what he's saying here, the word logos is God. And, and Jesus is God's divine expression. Jesus is God's cause. Jesus is God's communication. Jesus is God's speech. Let me just share with you, and I close my little message. This, this word reason means that we need to be ready to give a ready defense of the reason of Jesus is the hope, and he is the hope that lies within us. If I can't depend on kinfolk, if I can't depend on man, thank God I got Jesus. I got Jesus in this enough. Outside on the billboard, outside on the billboard, the, the Bible teaches, the Bible teaches that, that, that Jesus was hurt by the church but he still comes to church and let me tell you you may come to the conclusion now all I got is Jesus let me tell you if all you got is Jesus you got everything and everybody you need this word reason, this word reason, logos, it is the same word found in John chapter 1 when it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and verse 14 of John chapter 1 said and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. His name is Jesus. You need Jesus. Let me tell you if you don't know him I want to introduce him to you. His name is Jesus. He's the son of God. His name is Jesus. He's Mary's only baby. His name is Jesus. He got came down through 42 generations. His name is Jesus. He got off in a little place of Bethlehem of Judea. His name his name is Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. His name is Jesus. He walked these mundane shores. Yes, he did. He walked these shores, I tell you. He didn't do any man any harm. He was sinless. He didn't do any harm to anybody. His name is Jesus. Yeah, Jesus of Christ. Mean men killed him. He took his own cross and marched up Calvary's hill. He died on that hill that day. He died until the S-U-N refused to sign. He died until the earth took the epilepsy the fit and began to rock like a drunken man. His name is Jesus. They took him off the cross. They buried him in the barbecue. too. His name is Jesus. He's my reason for hope. They buried him in a bar or two. It was a bar or two because he didn't need it too long. Out of that Thursday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. His name is Jesus. He's my hope. He, he's my strength. He's my heart pouring in the valley. He's my bridge over troubled water. He's the light, bright morning star. His name is Jesus. It is Jesus that we honor. It is Jesus that we worship. His name is Jesus. I can't give up. I've come too far now. The devil should have killed me while he had me. His name is Jesus of Christ. 
He has given me a way out of nowhere. Thank God for Jesus. He's given me a way out of nowhere. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Hang in there. They thought they had it. They killed him on the cross. The sun refused to shine. One centurion soldier said, surely this must be the son of God. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. Early that Thursday morning, he rose with all power. And the heaven and earth. And he said, he's my reason of hope. And I'm ready to tell anybody that I'm going to sanctify the Lord God. I'm going to set God apart. The supreme one because of Jesus. He's my connection. The Son connects me to Jesus the Christ. Have you tried? Won't he do it? I know he will. Won't he do it? He'll make a way out of no way. Won't he do it? He will fix your issues. Won't he do it? His name is Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He's my reason for the hope that lies within. And my hope is standing on my tiptoes, looking over the horizon to see the next blessing that the Lord is bringing. Thank God for Jesus. But Whitlock says you ought to be ready to plead the case of how over 2,000 years ago Jesus died for you. He gave his life, a voluntary life. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. You ought to be ready to tell everybody that asks you of the hope that's in you, that they took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You ought to be ready to tell anybody that it's this Jesus that can make a way out of no way. It's this Jesus, when all your hope is gone, he can strengthen you. He can hold you up. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right, because you'll never get it right. You need Jesus to get it right for you. The door is open. Will you trust him? Will you accept him? He is your reason to hope. If you're about to give up hope, hold on. Jesus is present. Jesus is available. You can trust him and try him. Right here. Right now. If you've never received Jesus as your your personal Savior, this is your moment. Just close your eyes and repeat after me in this little simple prayer. Inviting him into your life. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer honestly, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. We believe that you're born again and you're saved. We believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior. There may be others who have Jesus as your Savior, but for some reason you've been doing your own thing. You've been acting your own way. I say to you, trust him to be your Lord. As your Lord, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will anoint you with hope and strength. I want to pray with you. Lord God, we ask you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins. Bless us to repent. Bless us to be restored 
bless us, Lord, to be rededicated today. Give us a new direction. Bless us to trust you, not only as our Savior, but also as our Lord. Guide our footsteps, guide our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who don't have a church home. Are you in between church homes? I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend that you make the New Beginning Church your home. You can do so in person by coming forth, or you can do so on air by inboxing me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church, and we will welcome you to this great family of faith in Southeast Houston. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for wrapping your arms around this service. And we thank God for being with us. God bless you and God keep you. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he has already, he has already done. We praise God for who he is and what God has already, already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. We thank God for who he is. Let me take this moment to, to thank those who, who contribute to the minister's uh, appreciation month of October. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you for appreciating me as your pastor. Thank you who participated in the pastor's anniversary in September. Thank you so much for being a part of, of this service and being a part of the service to your pastor. November 21st, November 21st, Pastor Richard Rose will be our guest speaker as we celebrate, as this church celebrates the appreciation of Sister Carolyn Davis and Pastor Matthew Davis. Pastor Richard Rose will be here on November 21st to celebrate an appreciation. I want to thank the church for appreciating us every year. So we want to welcome my pastor, Pastor Richard Richard Jewel, Jewel Rose. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. The white and blue envelopes are for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. The white and red envelopes are for pastor's love offering. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way in the air and you will be served. We use envelopes to make sure that you, you are recognized for being here. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and, and you will be served. Please raise your hand and you will be served.
Father, we thank you for these gifts. We bless them in Jesus' name. Somebody has not given. Hey, hallelujah. We don't want you to miss your blessing. I was getting ready to thank the Lord for it, for it, for you giving to him. Why don't you stand on this side and bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts? you your birthday is in the month of November. We want you to stand. We want to recognize you. Amen. We got some. Let's sing to these. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. In your prayer time, will you join me in praying for the Dennis family? Uh, two different Dennis family, one in Chicago and one in Houston. First of all, the Dennis family, uh, Carolyn Dennis and Samantha Dennis. Carolyn Dennis lost her son unexpectedly. And Samantha Dennis, which is one of the young girls from the Turning Hearts Music Ensemble, that man was her dad. So we want to, to lift her and them in prayer as we come before the Lord. And also, I've asked you before, and I ask you again, pray for my family, the Wallace family, the Dennis family, and the Woods family. Lift our family up before the Lord as uh, my cousin Beth is still on investigation. So lift this family before the Lord, my family, the Wallace family, the Dennis family, and the Woods family. So most of you know that my mother's main name is Wallace, so we want to lift, lift that family, family before the Lord. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for this terrible prayer time. We ask you to bless us, Father God. Heal as only you can heal. Bless the Dennis family here in Houston. We pray for the Dennis family in Chicago. We pray for the Wallace Woods family. We pray that you lift us secure us, bless our lives, give wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. also want to thank those of you who participated in the, T the 10K, the, the 10K walk, run, and cycle. And thank you so much for your participation in your gifts. Uh, we were able to do more than $3,500 for the roads. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you. And as of this morning, money is still coming in for the roads based on what you have given and our appeal. So we are over $2,500 right now. So thank you so much. If you want to continue to give to the roads, the roads is an organization that allow women with no insurance to have um, breast mammograms for free. And in order for them to do that, we have to support them financially. So thank you for coming out in a very real way and giving to the Rose. So we are over $2,500. We thank God for that. It is now for us to turn our attention toward communion. Communion is that time where Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room. And he says, as often as I, you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for communion. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you for how you handle things and do things. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us, Father God, to partake in communion. 
We thank you for every saved soul, every baptized soul. We thank you, Father God, for just blessing us to be who we are regardless of who we have been. Bless the table. Bless the bread. Bless the wine. Bless those who will partake that we would not drink and eat damnation to our souls. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
disciples. He held up the bread and said, this is my body. Eat ye all of it. He held up the cup. He said, this is the blood of the New Testament for the remissions of your sin. Drink ye all of it. Praise the Lord. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what we want you to do. 
Okay, I am going to start with the Bible class. Braille. Uh, they get points uh, every week for turning their assignments. And they get awarded at the end of three months. Thank you, Braille. We also have Jacob Garza. He is going to get a Bible uh, class award and also a court card award. Braille got his court card award last week. We also have Gilbert Garza. He's going to receive the short card award and also Bible class award. Thank you, Gilbert. Then we have, let's move on to, uh, Great, great. Come up, Braylon. Come up, Braylon, so we can all see you. Braylon received his uh, award last week. <laughs> Past the day. Okay. We were more last week for uh, his grade. Now we're going to move on to the piano recital. We had a piano recital on yesterday. So we're going to start with our really. Our really is going to receive report card award, Bible class award, and piano recital award. So thank you, our really. We're going to move on to Danielle. Danielle is going to receive Thank you, Danielle. Next, we have Sophia. Sophia is going to receive her award for Sunday school and for uh, the piano recital. We are trying to grow up some musicians at this church. You are just putting way until they all start playing uh, for the church. Now we have Daniel. Daniel Malo, he's going to receive his court card award, his Bible class award, and his piano recital award. Thank you. We have Kevin Malo, his court card award, Bible class award, and his piano recital award. Then we have Brother Ashi. Ashi is going to receive the Bible Class Award and the Piano Recital Award. And I think those are all of the children that are here, okay? So thank you all so much. Boys and girls, continue to do a great job in the school. Listen to your parents and I know your parents to you. Amen. I want to thank God for these young people again. We thank God for, for what they're doing here. We're growing up scholars, musicians, and, and engineers and technicians. Amen. Why don't we stand to, to be dismissed? Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, that Jesus is our reason to hope. He's our reason for hope. He's our reason and hope. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in our going. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us and, and bless us. Bless us, Father God, that we will always hold to you. Bless us, Father God, that we will always walk in righteousness, even when pressures are high. Bless us, Lord, that as we go forward, Father God, that your name will be raised up, that men will see Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us say, amen and amen. We want to thank Sister Leslie and her family for coming out to, with us today. This is their first time visiting us. We want to thank them for being a part of our service. You are dismissed.